Hi, boys and girls. This is Grandma Sheila with today's story. Our story is called The Birthday Gift That Saved a Life. Well, Sylvia, she was 10, and she lived in a big mansion high on a hill. As far as you could see from the porch of that mansion, her father owned the land. Her father was a very rich man. Now, Sylvia had two older brothers, and her mom and father, when they had had their third baby, they were so tickled when they found that they had a little girl. So everybody loved little Sylvia. That's what they named her. And now she was going to have a birthday in another week. Well, father, he thought about, you know, a 10th birthday can be very special. And father thought, I need to get her something very special. Well, her bedroom was full of dollies and doll houses and dishes and all sorts of stuffed animals and things. She didn't need any of those things. And he thought, what can I get her? He got a wonderful idea. He thought, Sylvia needs something that's alive. Father went to town and he talked to this person and he talked to that person. He kept going from place to place till he heard of a family that had a female German shepherd and she was full grown. Well, father rushed over to see this dog. Oh, she was the most beautiful German shepherd that father had ever seen and her temperament was wonderful, the lady said. She's kind to everybody. She hardly ever barks. She's gentle with children. Well, Father said, she sounds absolutely wonderful. I'd love to buy her. Can I do that? And the lady said, yes. We love Cindy, but we have too many dogs here on the farm. And the father said, I need a birthday gift for my 10-year-old daughter. And she said, oh, C Cindy would be a wonderful gift. She would love your daughter. So father made arrangements to pick up Cindy the morning of Sylvia's birthday. That week passed very quickly. And Sylvia, she was excited about having a birthday like all 10 year olds are. And she had gone out to play, you know, on that huge estate that father owned. There were miles and miles of fields to run through and they had animals, horses and other things. But nobody was especially Sylvia's. So she would go run through the fields and down to the big lake that was down the hills from the house. Well, she enjoyed doing all those things, but she had nobody to enjoy it with her. Well, she knew she needed to get back to the house by lunch. So she rushed back through the fields, up the hill, and into the house. Well, she got her hands washed and her face washed, and she put on one of her pretty little dresses, and then she heard her father calling to her, Sylvia, Sylvia, come here. I'm in the sitting room. Well, Sylvia, she came real quickly when her father called, and she went right down the stairs and then into that sitting room, and there sat father and her two brothers. 
but it wasn't those people that Sylvia saw that excited her so much. There, sitting on the floor in front of Father, was the most beautiful German shepherd dog that Sylvia had ever seen. And Father smiled. He said, Sylvia, meet Cindy. This is your birthday present. Sylvia couldn't believe it. And that dog, it smiled from ear to ear at Sylvia. She rushed over to Cindy Dog and she knelt down in front of her and she started petting her and petting her. And then she reached up and she hugged her. And Cindy just lapped it all up. She even reached out and kissed Sylvia on the cheek with a kind of slobbery doggy kiss. While Father was pleased that Sylvia was so happy about Cindy, and he said, she's all yours, and I've purchased everything you need to take care of her. So you'll get to feed her and water her and take her with you when you go on your walks. At first, I think you should use the leash till she's used to where she is and she knows you better, but then she can just run as, as much as she wants with you. And Father said the lady that had her said she was gentle and kind and she hardly made any noise at all. Well, that was the starting of a wonderful friendship for Sylvia and Cindy. Well, after lunch that day, Sylvia went to her father and said, I want to take Cindy for a walk. Father said, that's fine. Just put the leash on her and show her all the places you like to go. Then she'll know where to look for you. Well, Sylvia thought that was wonderful. Now she had somebody she could talk to and be friends with and just be with. She wasn't alone. Well, that day, Cindy got to see all Sylvia's favorite places. And Sylvia, last of all, took her down to the lake. And she wondered if Cindy could swim. So Sylvia swam good. But her father, he would let her come to the lake by herself. But she knew that she could only go in so far. She had to be able to stand up. Well, she waded into the lake, and Cindy waded in after her. Then she thought, I'll throw a stick for you, Cindy, and you can go get it. So she climbed out, and she picked up a stick off the ground, and she threw it as hard as she could throw it. And it went out quite a ways in the lake and was floating on top of the water. But Cindy, she looked. But she didn't go get it. Sylvia said, go fetch. But Cindy just smiled and looked at her. And she thought, well, maybe it's just the day. She doesn't want to go fetch today. But Cindy would come whenever Sylvia called her. Well, time went by at home, and her two brothers, they knew that Cindy was Sylvia's, but they thought, we'll teach Cindy some tricks. So they'd taken her outside, and they tried throwing things for Cindy to go fetch. But she'd just look at him like, that's kind of a silly thing to do. Why would I want to do that? The brothers, 
They tried every trick they knew. They tried all sorts of things to get Cindy to do the tricks that most dogs can do. They gave her treats. They praised her. They told her even what a dumb dog she was, which that probably didn't help any. Finally, after this went on for weeks and weeks, the boys went to their dad and they said, that dog Cindy that you got for Sylvia is dumb. She won't do anything. She won't fetch. She won't shake hands. She won't sit. She won't go in circles. She won't jump. She won't beg for anything. We think she's dumb. Well, father was concerned, but then he thought, well, maybe it's just that the boys don't really know how to teach a dog. Well, father had had oodles of dogs over the years, so he took Cindy out with him away from everybody else, and he tried to teach Cindy tricks. Cindy would come when father called but she wouldn't do any of the other tricks. She just watched father do things. She watched him throw. She looked to see where the stick or the ball would go, but she would never do any of those things. Well, father tried for a long time and he thought, maybe Cindy is a dumb dog. Well, Every day, Cindy went out with Sylvia, and Sylvia had gotten to really love Cindy. She didn't care if she was a dumb dog or not. She loved her, and Cindy would play with her, and they would do all kinds of fun things. Well, finally, after weeks and weeks and weeks had gone by, father called Sylvia and Cindy into his library. And he said to Sylvia, I'd like to talk to you, Sylvia. So Cindy sat down and Sylvia climbed up on her daddy's lap and she said, yes, daddy, what is it? And father said, I think I've made a mistake in buying you Cindy. She doesn't seem to be very smart. She won't do tricks for even me. I think that maybe she is a dumb dog, like the boys say, and I need to take her back, and I will get you another birthday present. It will be better than Cindy. And Sylvia went. I don't want another birthday present. I want Cindy. I love her. Well, what could a father say? He said, okay, Sylvia, don't worry about it. We'll give Cindy more time. Maybe she's just not adjusted yet. Oh, Sylvia thought. That would be awful if father took Cindy away. Well, time went by. More and more and more time. Well, Sylvia, when she would take Cindy down to the lake, she would try to teach her tricks. Finally, she was able to teach Cindy to shake paws. <laughs> and then she was able to teach her to sit when she was told to sit. And she was so excited. She wanted to rush and tell, show her brothers and her dad so they wouldn't call Cindy a dumb dog anymore. Cindy wasn't dumb. But then she got worried. What? What if I bring Cindy in and Cindy gets scared or something and she
she she won't do her tricks. Oh, I'll just not show them. Maybe someday I can show them. Well, one day while they were down at the lake, Sylvia got a wonderful idea. She wondered if maybe, maybe Cindy was a rescue dog. So, Sylvia did something that you boys and girls should never, ever do. She went out a little further than she generally went into the lake. And she could still stand up. So she was still following what her father said. And she kind of knelt down in the water. And she started flailing her arms. And she kept saying, help, help. She wanted to see if Cindy would come get her. But Cindy just sat there and looked at her. She intently watched her. Sylvia thought to herself, well, that didn't work. She didn't come to try to help me. But maybe Cindy was smarter than Sylvia and everybody else thought. Maybe Cindy knew that Sylvia was just playing. So there was no reason to help her. Well, time went on, and Sylvia loved Cindy better every day. She didn't care if she could do tricks or do other things, as long as she was her companion and friend. That's all Sylvia wanted. Well, Father had tried again saying he would get her another dog then, and Sylvia would have none of it. Well, at the first year went by, and Sylvia and Cindy were best of friends now. They could roam the whole estate, and what fun Sylvia had. Well, it was summer again, and it was very hot. And Sylvia thought, I'm going to go down to the lake and get in the water. Well, a lot of the time, girls in those days didn't really wear pants much. They generally wore dresses. Well, and they had swimming dresses, too. <laughs> That's what they called them, and that's kind of what they looked like. And they had little pants under them. But anyway, Silver took Cindy, and they headed to the lake. Well, Cindy was hot, too. So as soon as Sylvia got in the lake, Cindy got in, too. And she didn't go in very far, but she lay down in that cool water and she closed her eyes and went, ah, oh, however a dog goes off. <laughs> but Sylvia, she decided she was such a good swimmer. And in reality, she was, that she wanted to swim out into the lake. And she thought, you know, I bet I could swim clear across this lake if I wanted to. But she didn't want to right then. But she got in the water. She patted Cindy on the head as she passed her. And she got out so it was deep enough that she could start to swim. And she started swimming. She thought, this is great. And she went, further and further and further out into that lake. Oh, she was kicking her feet. She was kicking her hands. <sighs> and then she realized she was getting tired. Maybe she'd swam too far. And she thought, it's okay. I'll just stand up and rest for a little bit. But when she went to put her feet down on the bottom of that lake, 
she couldn't feel the bottom. She sat there for a while with her head above the water, kind of making herself, kicking her feet, making her arms go while she thought what to do. And she thought, I need to turn around and swim back to shore. Well, she started swimming again toward the shore. But she got going slower and slower and slower. And still, she couldn't reach the bottom. She was exhausted. She didn't know what to do. She kept, she stopped for a little bit and kicked her feet a little bit to keep herself above the water. But finally, she couldn't do that anymore. She was so exhausted that she went below the water and disappeared. Well, Cindy was watching. Cindy sat up and she looked intently. Where was Sylvia? Immediately, Cindy jumped back in that lake and with all four paws started swimming as fast as a dog can dog battle. She keep her head up looking around. Where's, where's Sylvia? She kept going and going and going. Finally, she stopped. She looked and she smelled. She couldn't see Sylvia. She couldn't smell her. She went on further. She stuck her head in the water and she looked around and she swam more. But where was Sylvia? Finally, a little head popped, popped up out of the water and Cindy, Cindy's dog mind went, Sylvia, it's Sylvia, on, on she went. And by this time, Sylvia had gone under the water again. <clears throat> well, Cindy got over. She knew where Sylvia was now. She got right over top and she dove down, doggy paddling down, down, down into that lake till she saw Sylvia. And she pushed her way to the bottom where Sylvia was. And she came to her and she reached down and she grabbed the back of that dress. And with Sylvia in her mouth, she, Cindy, started swimming. Now, sw Cindy had real good dog instinct. She knew which way to go. And Cindy swam with her head up so that her eyes were out so she could see. And all the time, she kept her mouth closed tight, holding on to Sylvia. And she pulled her to shore. When she got to the edge of that lake, she lay Sylvia down. And she started licking Sylvia's face, licking, licking. But Sylvia didn't wake up or didn't sit up. And Cindy knew that Sylvia was in trouble. Now, Cindy was no dumb dog. She, with her mouth, grabbed Sylvia again. And it was a long ways from that lake up to the house. But... She ran as fast as her doggy legs would go, all the way up the hills and through the little valleys and up that hill to the house and onto the porch. She laid Sylvia down in a puddle of water. And then Cindy started to bark. And she barked and she barked. And she howled, and she barked as loud as any dog could bark. Well, the brothers were upstairs, and they heard Cindy barking, and they thought, Cindy never barks. 
Wonder what that dumb dog's doing now. So they ran downstairs. They ran into the, the library where father was and they said, what's wrong with Cindy? And father said, oh, she's barking, isn't she? She never barks. And father went, she never barks. Where's Sylvia? And he ran toward the porch where they could hear the sound of the dog barking coming from. And he opened the door and there stood Cindy, dripping wet, barking and barking and barking over top of Sylvia. And father looked at her and he got down real close. He said, Sylvia, Sylvia, wake up, Sylvia. But Sylvia didn't wake up. Father went to the boys. He said, oh, no, oh, no. He said to the older brother, he said, go get the doctor. Go quick, go get the doctor. And then father started working on Sylvia. He put his mouth over her mouth. And he started breathing for her because she wasn't breathing. <sighs> then he rolled her on her side and he hit her on the back, trying to get all that fluid to come out of her lungs. Then he pushed on her stomach. Maybe he could get the fluid to come out that way. Then he put his arms around her and he squeezed her tight over her stomach area in hopes of getting that water to come out. Oh, what could he do? He prayed. He kept doing what he could do and he prayed. And all the time, Cindy stood there looking sadly at Sylvia and whining. Well, father, he worked and he worked. And pretty soon, father heard horses' hooves coming as fast as they could go. Around that mansion they came. And the doctor jumped off the horse and his son jumped off another horse. And they ran up on the porch and the doctor started doing what doctors can do for people that have drowned. Well, they worked and they worked and they worked on Sylvia. And finally, Sylvia started to choke and she coughed and she coughed and her eyes came open and she said, Daddy, and she coughed some more. Well, the doctor helped. The doctor knew what to do. Sylvia was alive. And Cindy, Cindy jumped over and started licking Sylvia's face again and kissing on her. Oh, my Sylvia is alive. They took Sylvia up and they put on a dry nightgown and they laid her on her pretty bed. And Cindy went up and sat right beside her. Cindy stood on the edge of the bed looking at Sylvia. And the doctor turned to father and said, if it wasn't for that dog, your daughter would be dead. And father said, I know. She's a good dog, isn't she? <laughs> And of course, the brothers, the brothers had been crying. Their little sister had looked like she was dead, but Cindy had saved her life. Boys and girls, God gives the animals the instincts and the ability to help us humans. I hope that you're never in a place like Sylvia was. I hope that you each have a friend, a four-legged friend, 
that would be there to help. Thank you, boys and girls. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now.